Welcome, Amber Seeley, the director of No Man of God, which is uh, opening now in theaters and available on demand. How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? I'm doing. I'm doing great. I'm. I'm really thrilled to talk to you about about this movie. Um, so, No Man of God was crafted from the recordings and recollections of Bill Hagmeyer, who was one of the first FBI profilers, as he was conducting interviews with Ted Bundy on death row for a number of years. Um, did you or Elijah Wood, who plays Bill Hagmeyer, did you reach out to Bill uh, as a consultation while constructing this version of the character, or did it? Did you rely solely on the historical record and Kit Lesser's script? Well, first of all, I just have to say I love that we both have like overcrowded shelves behind us. This feels very like connected. Um, <laughs> but second of all, um, yeah, no, Bill Hagmeyer is a, a executive producer on the movie, and he was very much a part of the process. And so um, he became a good friend. I talked to him a lot. We emailed. Unfortunately, because it was COVID, we couldn't see each other in person, but we we definitely forged a friendship and he was such a great resource. And um, he not only gave us those recordings, which we all listened to, um, he sent me other videos and photographs. I have photographs somewhere here of Ted Bundy that, that no one else has ever seen that he sent me. Um, so he was such a wealth of information and I would ask him everything all the way from, you know, what did this feel like? What did you think? Um, all the way down to, you know, can you send me pictures of your teeth and your hair? Cause I want to, you know, get your haircut exactly right on Elijah. So, you know, with knowing that, was he involved from the outset, like which came first, the chicken or the egg, the script or his involvement and how accurately did Kit Lesser capture, you know, his portion of his life story in the writing? Well, you know, I don't know which came first because the, they had been trying to get the project going for about five years before I came on. So I'm not quite sure if he came on first or or the script was there first. Um, but he, um, you know, wait, sorry, what was your question? I feel like I just blanked out on your question. I was thinking about the recordings and having listened to the recordings and then I just totally lost what your actual well, question was. I'm sorry. No, it's cool. I, I guess, um, first of all, I didn't realize that he was the ex -produ exec producer on the film. That was, that's my bad. But I guess what I'm getting at is, you know, so this script uh, was written about this particular episode, this period of years. So if you were brought onto the project, I guess you were kind of uh, sought out or you, I guess, auditioned, if that's how it works with, with directors. Yeah, they sought me out. No, yeah, you, they send you the script to decide if, you know, they make an offer well, first they decide, do they like you, you know, producers? And then if they're interested in you, they will send you the script for you to consider. And then, and then it's, you get to say, yes, I'm interested. And then you come in and, and do a pitch. Um, that's how it normally happens. Of course, there are directors that are hugely successful that they just say, hey, will you direct this? But sadly, I'm not there yet. Hopefully one day soon. <laughs> yes. Well, I guess what I was getting at was um, how much of the uh, script do you know was written before Bill's involvement? Because, you know, you're writing about someone who actually existed and who's still around to perhaps give input and say, yeah, this is accurate, or maybe tweak this. And did that uh, carry over into the filmmaking? Was there any adjustments that happened in the writing or the portrayals and even, you know, getting Elijah involved in playing this character that perhaps changed from when you were brought on? Yeah, no, that, thank you for that reminder. I mean, um, when Kit was writing it, I can't say, you know, I know he did talk to, he had a conversation with Bill and I know that he had access to those recordings. So the actual recorded conversations between Bundy and Hagmeyer. Um, but I think that, you know, Kit really based his script off of those recordings. So, you know, a lot of what is in those recordings ended up verbatim on the page. But a script is also like a living thing until you film it, it's a kind of living, breathing thing and it moves. So when I came on, I had notes and, and we made changes then. I added some stuff to the script on my own as most directors who are also writers do. Um, and so it definitely was a living, breathing organism until, you know, you start shooting, you get right into prep. Um, but Bill was never involved in this making of the script. I mean, he was a wealth of information and gave us, you know, but he was never, he never, he read it before we filmed it. Um, but he never was like, well, this didn't really happen or that didn't really happen. You know, he was very respectful of our process and he was very much like, you know, you guys are the filmmakers. I'm a profiler. Like, that's your job. This is mine. I'll give you all the information that I have, but your job is making the movie. So, um, yeah, he really was a, a lovely guy who just trust, trusted us and trusted our process. But, you know, we had his life rights, you know, to make the film. So there was a certain amount of, um, 
uh, you know, agreement that he had to, you know, to give in order to make the movie. And, and for me, it was also really important that we were telling the truth of the story and adding a layer of, you know, um, dramatic license. But I also wanted to really honor who he was, you know, he's really a good, kind uh, person who did, you know, incredibly hard work. Um, and so it was important to me to kind of honor that. Well, the film reminded me a lot of talk radio, not only because a TV Luke, show. No, the oh. uh, <laughs> no, I think that was news radio. Talk news radio, radio was yeah, yeah. It was it's the Eric Bogosian drama from 1989, I think. And not only because Luke Kirby kind of resembles Eric Bogosian, but also gave this intense performance, him and, and Elijah, that essentially the movie is, with a few exceptions, built around these really intense interview scenes and kind of monologuing and dialoguing back and forth. Um, so in terms of, you know, you coming onto the project, reading the script and getting involved, uh, how did you decide on your vision for this film, as opposed to say other movies that might focus on the actual killings or the grisly sensational details, you honed in on trying to get at the, the person that Ted Bundy was and the kind of person that could draw out that information from Ted Bundy. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, one of our producers, Daniel Noah, when, after I, you know, presented my pitch and given them the sort of, you know, the whole creative deck for the film, um, he used to say, I love this. It's like if Terrence Malick made my dinner with Andre. <laughs> and I was like, well, I love Terrence Malick and I love my dinner with Andre. So like, I'll take it. I love that kind of comparison. Um, and I, I think, you know, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I think that's sort of accurate, you know. Um, and as he said about the, the grisly stuff, you know, to me, well, first of all, that wasn't, you know, it's not part of this story. This is to do with the relationship between Hagmeyer and Bundy, you know, and there was no gristle between the two of them. Um, in terms of like recreating the crimes and, and, you know, having doing a sort of flashback to what he did, I just wasn't interested in that. I was like, that has been done before. I don't think it adds to the conversation at this point. Um, it's not to say that, that there is never a place for violence in films, there certainly is, but I think that we are very used to seeing the destruction of women's bodies in film. And I'm just not interested in that anymore, unless it's really doing something new and different that we haven't seen before and adding something unique to the conversation. Um, I, I'm not, I, just, I just don't wanna see it. I don't wanna do it. It wasn't important to me in this, in this story. Um, it had nothing to do with the relationship between Bill and Bundy. Um, I was much more interested in adding or kind of infusing the film with a feeling of like, what does it feel like to be the woman in the room listening to the, these two guys talking about it? You know, that, that stuff wasn't on the page. That was stuff that I brought to it as a female filmmaker. I was like, I'm a woman. Every single other woman I know knows what it's like to walk down the dark alley and hear footsteps behind you and get scared, you know? And that's a part of this conversation. I don't think you can talk about Ted Bundy without talking about females' experiences and his victims' experiences and these lives that are cut short, you know, people who can't speak for themselves, can't, you know, give their opinions. Um, and so I really wanted to, um, to bring that to the film in a way that was very subtle, um, but also had some, you know, kind of import to it. Well, that, that's something I, I actually did want to talk to you about is, you know, there is that undercurrent of predation in the movie, not just in terms of, of Bundy and his crimes, but also, you know, Bill Hagmeyer and some of the struggles that we see between his faith uh, and what Bundy kind of draws out of him as far as acknowledging some feelings that he might have had for perhaps more perverse and, and even deadly, uh, you know, carnal desires. Is that something that you found, uh, you know, it, was that something that you brought thematically to the film or is that based on any of you know, Hagmeyer's actual notes or, or thoughts uh, from that time, or is it a commentary on, say, people or men in general? It's, it's, I think it's kind of, in a sense, all of the above, except for uh, Bill's recollections. Bill is a guy who, you know, when I asked him, did this affect you? What, what effect did it have on you? His answer, I thought was really interesting. He said, well, if I say, uh, yes, it affected me, then I'm bad at my job. And if I say, no, it didn't affect me, then I'm a monster. And that was really interesting to me. And I, I that, that was the part where then I thought, you know, my creative license has to sort of deviate from, I really want to capture the truth. I want to capture exactly what happened. And I need to add something else because otherwise, why are we making a movie about it? I need to add this other layer. And so that's when I took in 
kind of my dramatic license and and when like you said i am ma basically making a larger commentary on all of us right our own nature uh, you know how how do we make choices to be good and evil what makes us good and evil um and then my interpretation of what i think it would have been like to be bill so you know I think that if I asked Bill, like, Bill, did it ever make you question, you know, your relationship to women? And did you ever watch it? You know, he certainly, he had those conversations with Bundy where he said, yes, I could kill someone. He had those conversations. Those are verbatim. Um, but did he ever drive down the street and see a woman and, you know, like, uh, my guess would be no. But to me, the film was much more interesting if we added that layer where we we get to question, you know, what kind of effect does sitting across from evil for so long for so many years have on a person you know because to me that was so fascinating and i think bill just happens to be a person who really is um you know as i know him he's just a really good moral person and his faith in family and his children and his grandchildren and his faith in god is what has kept him on that path but i think that if i had been sitting in that seat I, I don't know what would have happened to me. So I guess as a director, that's where I'm putting my voice in there. That's where I'm asking the questions that I'm interested in. Cause I wanna know like, my God, what's it like when you hear those stories, you know, as your job day in and day out and you're doing all this research, like, does it affect your dreams? Does it affect your relationships? And so that was the part that I, you know that I wanted to bring to it. I assume Bill's seen the, the finished film. Yeah. Um, does he, did you get a reaction from him as far as the way that you brought that license to portraying what might've been going on in his head? I mean, I was nervous about that certainly because I was like, you know, I just, I had a conversation with him where I said, you know, Bill, I did take some dramatic license, you know, and he was like, I know, I know, I get, I get it. Uh, but he was very sweet. And he always said, you know, I trust you. I trust you to do, do, you know, make a good movie. And, and he, yeah, he said he liked it. And, uh, there was one part that he said, well, you wouldn't have done that. And I'm trying, I can't, I can't remember what, oh, he said his family said to him, you know, well, that's, you didn't do that, but it was a very small little thing. And I, I don't remember what it was. I got to ask him again, but no, I think overall, you know, his, his family um, and himself, uh, they, you know, from what they've told me, at least they, they've, they've enjoyed the movie and they're going to, you know, we're going to try to have a, a screening at a theater for him local to where he is. Hopefully we can work it out where, so, you know, um, his, colleagues and so he's now retired but you know he's been a profiler for his whole career and he became one of the most famous profilers in the world and um yeah so he's got a big community of people that love him and respect him and want to support him and you know all i know is he still takes my calls so i didn't you know <laughs> I didn't, it's a good uh, sign <laughs> yeah yeah he's, <laughs> he's just a lovely guy um, last question. I mean, there have been a lot of movies about serial killers and, and Ted Bundy uh, in general. I know there was a minor dust up between you and another director uh, over Ted Bundy movies earlier this summer. What do you think is the fascination with Ted Bundy in particular as far as serial killers go in terms of the popular imagination? And is this a coincidence that there's these movies coming out? Do you feel there's some kind of a, a, a subconscious or conscious need or are people asking for all this stuff or is it just a coincidence? I think it's a lot of things. And I think that these things are not mutually exclusive. I think it's, are there too many Bundy movies? Yes. When people say that there've been too many movies made about Bundy, they're not wrong. Am I guilty of making another one? Yes. And is the interest in Bundy and people like this wrong? No, and yes. You know, I mean, I do think that where we put our attention, where we spend our money, right, is important. And we should question that constantly. And I do think that it's an important question to ask like, why do we know Bundy's name and we don't know his victims' names? Mm. Why have we made 22 movies about Bundy and we've made hardly any about the victims, if any at all? I mean, I don't, I don't know if there are any that are just entirely about the victims. Um, you know, that to me is an interesting thing. And as I said, I'm as guilty of that as the next person. Um, and yet I also like to believe that there is, well, let me just also say, there's also, this is a business, this is entertainment, and we do have to make movies about what people are interested in. But I also think that there is something that is, uh, good, for lack of a better word, about our interest in um, trauma, I guess. Um, you know, I think about when we drive on the freeway and we see a car crash and we rubberneck and we turn to see what happens. I don't think it's that we, oh God, it's so cool to see, uh, you know, somebody in pain and blood. I think it's, it comes from a place of, oh God, what happened to that poor person? I hope they're okay, you know? So I think that our interest in gristle 
is not always bad. Some of it comes from a place of like caring about other human beings and, and being curious about the pain that other people go through because we know what that's like to be afraid of that kind of pain. Um, so it's like, it's, it's both of those things. And so I don't have any of the answers. I'm just asking the questions, you know, um, but I do think that it's possible for there to be too many Bundy movies and that I felt like I had something new to add to the conversation and that I felt like I was, you know, um, I had, a, I had my own interpretation of Bundy that was different from the others. And so I felt like there was a seat at the table, the Bundy table for me. Um, well I'll just say to finish up, I think uh, there may be too many Bundy movies, but if there are no more, then I think No Man of God is a high note to go out on because I think you do bring something special to this subgenre, if you even want to call it that. So congratulations on the movie um, and good luck with it. And thank you so much for, for taking some time to talk with me. Thanks so much. It was great. Great to speak with you. All right. Take care.